Hey everybody, it's Webby. Uh, today I'm going to show you around the new Sync 4 system in the new Ford Ranger and also the Ford Everest. Uh, I'm using an XLT, uh, but most of the functions will be exactly the same as what you've got in your car. Um, so this is going to be a fairly lengthy video because there is quite a lot to go through um, because some of the functions are new to this new Ranger. Uh, some of them are the same as from the previous Ranger and Everest, um, so we'll look very familiar to those who've always got one of those vehicles. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff is new. Um, so we'll go through each section um, as we go. If you've got any questions or comments on anything that you see uh, or what I've said, feel free to leave them in the comment section below for me. I'll answer all your questions as soon as I can. Um, it might take me some time to you know, research or find out something, but I will come back to you, I'll answer all your questions. Um, so yeah, enjoy the video. Um, and say so it will be a little bit of a long one, um, but hopefully you'll get something from it, you'll learn something about the Sync 4 system um, in your new Ranger or Everest. So here we are then folks, Sync 4. Um, as with any good story, let's start at the beginning um, and go through the basics to, to begin with. Um, so there up in the top left corner, we can see we've got the time, we've got the outside temperature, the Wi-Fi symbol if you're connected uh, to your router at home or work, uh, then the up and down arrow is for data exchange uh, for your Ford Pass system. This button here, if we click on that one, that will access some of the other functions of the system or some of the main functions. And then if we go over to this one here in the corner, that will take you into where you can change all your controls and settings, see different preferences of some of the functions of the car itself and also the Sync 4 system. So let's get rid of that for a second. Uh, as you can see, we're on the radio at the minute. Down the bottom there, we've got some of the functions for the dual zone climate control. As I say, this is an XLT, uh, so we've got dual zone climate as standard. Uh, then we've got the actual physical buttons just down there at the bottom. Um, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward uh, when you first kind of look at it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to this button up here. As I said, this is where you can bring up all the main functions of the Sync 4 system. So we've got the radio there, which we're already on. Uh, so we've then got AM, FM and DAB, that's your three choices of what you want to listen to. Uh, so we're currently on FM. So if we just stay on here for the moment, we've got the arrows left and right, uh, so we can tune the radio. Uh, we've got the plus and the minus where we can switch between the different presets. Uh, the saved presets are in this section then down here, so you can see we've already got a couple of radio stations saved. Um, we then got things like traffic announcements, if you want to be alerted to any uh, sort of traffic incidents on your travel. The next one there in the middle, that will actually look for local radio stations, so where you can choose what you want to store, or maybe just what you want to listen to. Uh, if we get rid of that, and then this one here, that will take you into the settings for the radio. So that's basically a shortcut to go to the settings just for the radio system. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, nothing too tax in there. Uh, that is the radio system for you. So when you hit that button again, I'll come to phone in a in, uh, section in a minute because I'm actually filming with my iPhone. So I'll do everything else, then I'll come back to the phone uh, because I'll show you how to pair your phone up, uh, and in my case, how to use the wireless Apple CarPlay. So let's go to navigation next. So that brings up the built-in factory satellite navigation. So first few things to consider with this one, this button here will actually change the size of the display. So if we hit that button, it shrinks the map for you. And then what it will bring down the bottom is recently used functions. So we can see we were listening to the radio a minute ago. So it brings the radio up there as a recently used function. So if we wanted to go back to the radio, we haven't got to go and press that button up there and then go through the menus, we can literally just hit the radio and it will take us straight back to radio. Similarly now, you can now see that the navigation has appeared down here in the bottom because that's a recently used app. So let's go back to navigation that we were looking at a second ago. And for the exercise here, let's just enlarge the map. So easy functions. So the very top left hand corner, you've got your search button. So if we click on that, that'll say okay. Do you want to go to maybe a home or work that you've already preset and stored there in your favorites? You can have recent destinations that you've been to. 
you can have recent destinations but you've been to other favorites uh, not including work and home um, fuel prices and dynamic parking are, are turned off um, that's because they're probably not switched on uh, in the settings which I'll show you in a second you've got my trips so you can actually create a trip and store it in there uh, for sort of later use uh, and then we come down to my trends and this is actually quite a clever functions so as you use your vehicle the more you drive it the more you use your sat nav the sat nav system will actually sort of give you suggestions of places you might want to visit or places you might want to go um, based on what you've previously looked at or places you've previously been um, when putting addresses into your sat nav which is actually quite cool because you might end up finding places you've never been to before um, then you've got search tools so this determines how you search basically so do you want to you know, input a full address do you want to put the corner of two roads maybe a junction the name of a town which will then just take you to the middle of a town or you can actually use coordinates um, like GPS coordinates from a sat nav or you can search by phone number so when you've got your phone your Bluetooth phone connected to your car you can actually search by number so if you've then got an address saved into like a contact um, you can do that instead or what we could do is I could put in my work telephone number and there you go comes up with Berwick Ford that's actually pretty clever so if somebody so if you've just got a telephone number and you want to know exactly where that place is you can put the phone number in and hit go I'm actually at work so it's kind of um, telling me how to get to work but that's actually pretty clever it's a different way of actually finding out where you want to go so let's come out of the search tools so there you go that's just the different ways of how you can actually input addresses or information when you want to actually find somewhere to go travel to okay the next button here um, this changes the actual view of the map so at the minute we're in direction of travel and it's in 3d if we hit that that'll be north facing as an overhead and if we press it again it's in direction of travel but overhead so like a, a bird's eye view as they call it i think um, so yeah that's an overhead bird's eye view of the direction of travel so it's pretty straightforward and to be fair it's probably like most other sat nav systems to be fair um, then we've got down the bottom I'm just going to switch hands and make life easier just to access the buttons here so if we press this one here so this is a little bit more information you can access so this is about things where you are looking to sort of things ahead exiting for services if you want to stop at some services you can choose traffic and alerts so if we actually just hit that one for now so there you go so it's saying there's no traffic ahead so that's good so on your journey you can just hit the traffic and alerts button and then it will tell you if there's any sort of uh, accidents or anything on your travels you could also look up parking so if you're on your travels and you suddenly were going to turn off the road stop in town uh, you could hit the parking button and find out where your local car park is and this is quite a handy one where am i um, sometimes if you're you, know, you might be on the phone to someone and they say where are you and you think oh, i haven't got a clue hit that button it will tell you pretty straightforward it doesn't get any easier than that the other ones that are grayed out are things that you can't use because these ones relate to when you're actually using the sat nav um, if you're actually on your travels uh, if we go into the settings this is where you can actually set up your preferences of how you want the maps to work once you've put an address in so if we go to the map and the vehicle and then go to driving map view so that's what we're looking at second gauge remember when we saw the 3d or the bird's eye view uh, they call it track up uh, i don't know if that's like an american term uh, but that's basically just choosing your view the map layers is actually quite interesting so this will show you certain things as you're driving around um, so certain points of interest for example you can have buildings it will show you traffic um, but the point of interest for me is actually quite a good one so when you select that you can actually choose what points of interest are shown on the screen as you're driving along. So this will show you points of interest as you're actually driving along. Quite handy, as you're driving along with the petrol stations, it will show you the petrol station as you're driving, but it also shows the price of the fuel, um, which is actually really handy, particularly with fuel prices as they are at the minute. 
uh, then we can go to install map so it tells you what map you're using um, ANZ obviously we're here in Australia um, so yeah I don't think there's any real reason to get involved too much about that um, then you've got guidance again where you can choose your preferences um, about how you want the system to guide you basically um, so you've got your guidance prompts so you can have a voice prompt so it talks to you or just tone so it beeps when you've got to turn left or turn right uh, junction view will basically change the view of the map um, so as you're coming to a junction the map will change to take into account you're actually at a junction uh, the auto zoom uh, that will basically zoom the map in and out during guidance um, so when you sort of come up to junctions when you're on freeways when you're going to turn left or right um, just to sort of alter the look of the map for you calculation mode this is pretty straightforward nothing different here uh, from what you've probably seen on other sat nav systems um, so if you want faster time shorter distance or most economical you can then add in things that you want to avoid so if you particularly wanted to avoid toll roads for example um, then you could choose toll roads um, there's other bits and pieces here car share lanes yeah we don't really get those here in melbourne so much um, well, i've certainly not seen any anyway um, but yeah lots of different choices of things you want to avoid uh, custom avoidances this is a new one uh, i'm not quite sure ah, okay interesting so you could avoid a certain area so if you didn't want to go through a certain town for example you could say okay avoid this particular town or you could say avoid a certain road um, so yeah if you knew there was going to be road works on a particular road um, or just for whatever reason you wanted to avoid that road you can do it's actually quite clever actually um, gps simulator don't know what that does if i'm honest um, gps simulator whether that's something to do with the map view yeah i don't know answers on a postcard for that one if anybody knows what gps simulator is feel free to let me know because i've not read that one before uh, search pretty straightforward um, you can sort by relevance as in what you're actually searching for or by distance and traffic so that is obviously a good thing to have uh, so it will alert you when there's traffic um, and then it will automatically change your route if there is traffic so you can get there in a shorter distance and a shorter amount of time so that's all your search options for the sat nav system um, it is pretty straightforward uh, some of it is preferences you might just set up once uh, and then never change again uh, but then some of it is just stuff you'll change like day to day um, on each journey that you go on um, it does tell you just down here there's a compass to tell you which way you're facing it tells me i'm in berwick uh, and what the elevation is um, whether i'm at sea level or not and um, so yeah pretty straightforward stuff um, but a little bit to take in so coming along to media and uh, that does involve pairing up your phone so i'll come back to that section uh, once we've actually connected the phone and obviously the same for apple carplay um, i don't have an android phone uh, but the setup will be fairly similar to when you're using your carplay and the one thing i do really like about this system is the electronic owner's manual it's really good because you know, one really likes reading the manual they get with their car because you never really find what you're looking for. But Ford have been really clever with this. So when you go into the owner's manual on the SYNC 4 system, you've got a few options here. So you could either go into a category and find exactly what you're looking for. So for example, if you wanted to find out something about the keyless entry system on your car, you can literally hit the keyless entry. It'll tell you about settings, it'll tell you how to use the system, and then any limitations that might be involved. So whatever you choose, it goes in there and it gives you a description of the function you've chosen. If we just go back, again, there you go. So it tells you exactly how to use keyless entry if you've never had it before. So it's actually quite easy to read and understand. Um, certainly for somebody maybe new to a Ranger or new to a Ford vehicle, um, to understand how some of the features and functions work um, on your new car or ute should i say in the form of this ranger um, we've then also got things like bookmarks so when you go into a category if you go into that section there into the keyless entry and you go to the using keyless entry so it shows you how to set up and use everything if you hit this little bookmark button there and then we go all the way back out 
to bookmarks. So then you'll see using keyless entry has now been saved as a bookmark. So if yes, that's so it enables you to save things that you might think you'll use on a regular basis, or until at least you've learned how to use that system properly. Um, so that's actually quite a handy function to have. We've also got videos as well. At the moment, there's only one there for trailer sway control. Uh, so there's a, a fairly small library for videos at the moment, but I'm guessing over time they'll add a few more on for us. Uh, you can change languages. This is set obviously just for English. The function I like the most is the search function. So what you can actually do is you bring up a keyboard and let's have a look for the new integrated brake controller. So I've actually typed in brake and then CO because that's all I really need to put in. I hit the search button. It'll bring in lots of different things all relating to brakes. You can see there's a big long list of everything relating to brakes. But I want to particularly learn about an integrated brake controller. So if I come down a little bit, so there you go. So using the integrated trailer brake controller, if we hit on that, so as we had before, we can actually scroll through and it will take us through all the different steps of how to set up and use the integrated electric brake controller. So I think that's actually a really handy function to have because there's so many functions on these new cars these days and when you read an actual manual, sometimes it's hard to actually take in what they're, sh they're telling you. Whereas if you see it visually on the screen, uh, it can actually make it easier to learn. All right, so the next section we're gonna do is actually set up and use the Apple CarPlay. So we hit the button up here. Uh, let's actually attach the phone first of all. Uh, so we go into phone and it says we need to pair a device. So, I'll bring my iPhone here. So what we're going to do is actually we'll press the button first. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So as you can see there, Ford Ranger has come up on my Bluetooth screen on my phone. So we'll just hit that. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. So we'll press pair on the phone. And we we'll press yes on here. Uh, it then also says, do you want to allow contacts and favourites to sync? We do. So that's nice and easy, that's really straightforward. Please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. So it says here, my, it said there, my iPhone is compatible with wireless Apple CarPlay. And again, on the screen of my phone, it says here, use CarPlay. So I just connect that. Um, while we're waiting to do that, I shall turn on emergency assistance and then finish. It says here, do you want to use Apple, Apple CarPlay? Yes, we do. And there you go. There is wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, so it's... It, Apple Maps is even telling me that the vehicle I'm in is low on fuel at the minute, which is actually very accurate because it's got 28 k's left in the tank. So there you go, there it is, wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, that's as simple as it is. Um, you've got your maps, you've got your music, you've got a search function there. You can swipe across, you can see all your apps. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool and easy to use. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. I do like the fact you haven't got any cables. Um, the only downside is I'm in an XLT Ranger at the moment, so I do have to keep a cable in here to keep my phone charged. But if you're not going on too long a journey, then you should be okay. Um, you can actually see just down here how much battery life I've got on my phone. Um, so I've got a fair bit there, so I shouldn't be panicking quite too much at the minute. Um, but that's actually pretty cool. Um, and when you get back in your car, every time you get in, it reconnects automatically. And the speed at which it reconnects is actually really impressive. And if we go back to this button here, and we go back to media, so that will try and look for Bluetooth audio. So it's saying that I'm already connected via Apple CarPlay. So really that's the best way to actually access media on my phone. Um, so I'm not gonna bother with Bluetooth audio, I'm just gonna use the Apple CarPlay because it's much better than using Bluetooth audio. Right, so now we've had a bit of a play with the Apple CarPlay and media side of things. Uh, let's have a look at some of the settings that you can adjust uh, with your preferences. 
Uh, so we hit the little car button just up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, we go to controls, that gives us some functions uh, of additional functions that we can use within the car. Uh, so we've got driver assistance, we've got camera. So as you can see, that brings up the front camera. We've got the overhead camera there as well. If we hit this button here, that will then give us some choices there that we can actually see different views of what the cameras are showing us. Uh, so we can use the front camera, the widescreen camera, and then the rear camera. And also there, you can then use the towable function as well. So if you hit that, that will actually show you like a bird's eye view of your tow bar. So when you're lining up your caravan or your boat or whatever, it makes it a lot easier to actually hook up your tow bar. So with towing, what you can actually do is what you can, once you've hooked up whatever you're towing, you can add the information into the system because what it will do is actually adjust the sensitivity of the blind spot monitor on the Ranger or the Everest. So yeah, you add all your details in uh, and then you connect everything up and you're ready to go. The connection checklist, once you've actually plugged in your van or your boat, will actually make sure that all your connections are working properly, uh, your electrics are fine. Uh, we've then got a trailer light check as well, which you can press that and it will check all your indicators, your reverse lights, your brake lights, um, without you having to get out of the car, which I think is fantastic. Um, now with this add trailer function, you can add more than one. So if you've got a boat, a caravan, uh, a six by four trailer, you can add multiple um, trailers behind you and that will save every time you put your details in. So then it's easy to actually go in uh, and access each trailer or van without having to put the details in every time, uh, which is actually a really useful feature. Uh, so coming out of the towing one, uh, we've then got valet mode. So if you are literally gonna go and, you know, get your car hand washed or something like that, put a four digit pin code into there and actually lock your system for you so no one can access all your settings. If we go to settings, now this is probably the longest part of the video because as you can see, there's actually quite a lot to go through here. Um, so yeah, so uh, sit comfortably because we'll, uh, we'll try and get through this one as quickly as we can for you. Uh, so let's go phone. Oh, there's no phone connected at the minute because I disconnected mine uh, so I could do some filming. Uh, sound is basically your audio. So you've got your tone settings, which is your, your bass, your mid and your treble. Balance for fade is obviously where you want the sound to come from. Uh, your radio, so there's more preferences again for your radio. So it cho you can choose how many rows of presets you want. So if you only wanted two rows, for example, it would only give you two rows. You can turn on and off traffic announcements and news announcements. Um, so if you don't like them interrupting what you're listening to, you can turn them off. The radio text is actually quite a good one because when you're listening to the radio, it will either show the name of the song that's playing or it might show the name of the DJ or the, the name of the program that's on at the time, um, which is quite nice, it's a, it's a good function to have. Um, or indeed the same for the station logo, which is the one just beneath. Uh, if you turn on regional, um, that will then keep the radio transmission going if you suddenly go into a regional area, um, which at the same time you'd want to turn on alternative frequency, uh, just in case that same radio station changes frequency um, in different areas. Uh, again, you can also turn on a DAB service link uh, if you're going to listen to DAB radio as well, so that's your digital radio. Uh, let's go to driver assistance next. Uh, this is a bit of a biggie. Um, there's a fair bit to go with the driver assistance because, as with most modern cars, the Ranger and the Everest are full of modern safety systems. Um, the first one we come to is the auto hold function. So this is for vehicles with electronic parking brake. If you turn that on, when you get to a set of traffic lights or complete stop, it will actually apply the handbrake for you so you can take your foot off the pedal um, and yeah, it's a bit more comfortable when, you, when you're just sat there waiting for the lights to go green. Uh, cruise control, you can switch between normal and adaptive. Um, some people don't like the, you know, the functionality of adaptive cruise control, so you can turn it off. Um, so you've got a choice of that. And also you can turn off the lane centering function as well. Um, so that's where the, the car or the, the vehicle tries to keep you uh, in the center of the lane that you're driving on. Um, so it's kind of sort of constantly adjusting your steering for you. 
If you don't like it, you can switch it off, it's dead easy. Um, you've then got speed sign recognition. So this is where the cameras behind the rear view mirror will actually read all the speed signs as you're driving along, and then it displays the speed sign in the instrument cluster in front of the driver. What you can do with that function is set yourself a tolerance. So if you said, okay, whatever type speed zone I'm in, I want a tolerance of five kilometers per hour. So if you're in a 60 zone or an 80 zone, it doesn't matter which one it is, as soon as you're five kilometers over in this instance, then you'll start getting beeps and flashes on the dashboard to tell you that you've reached that limit. Quite a handy function, actually. Um, certainly, uh, if you're in an area that you're not familiar with, it's nice to know the speed limits um, because, yeah, you don't want to get caught out and copper fine um, from a lovely police officer. Uh, so speed limit assist um, carries on from the speed sign recognition that we had earlier. So you get your speed warning um, if you do exceed that uh, limit. You've got the tolerance there, which was five, because that is the same as what we had for our speed time recognition. Then the intelligence speed limiter, this is a fairly new thing. And the way it works is, when the camera reads the speed sign as you're traveling along, and let's say, for example, it's a 60 kilometers an hour zone, and you've chosen your tolerance of five. So what it would do is when you turn that on, it will automatically go to 65 kilometers an hour so our 60 zone plus our five kilometers an hour, the intelligence speed limiter will automatically increase or decrease the speed of the vehicle to get to 65. Now in some instances, I think that could be good. Some I think it could be a little bit dangerous, depending on how hard it breaks. If you're coming down from say 100 to a 60, depending on how hard it applies the brakes, it could mean that people traveling behind you don't react quick enough and actually might drive into the back of you. Um, so I'd need to see how that works, I think, if I, before I turn that function on. So for me personally, I'd probably turn that off for now. Uh, then we come to the lane keeping system. This is the same as uh, before. So if you've had a Ranger or an Everest, or in fact any Ford before, this is the same as you've had in your Sync 3 system before. So you've got your different modes. So you can have Alert, which vibrates the steering wheel. Aid will keep you in your lane, so it, it steers you back into your current lane and alert and aid will do both together. Again, pretty standard if you've had a Ford before. Pre-collision assist, so that's your autonomous braking. So you can obviously turn it on. The distance indication just means you'll get a display of the vehicle uh, in the instrument cluster in front of the driver. Uh, yes, obviously you want your auto emergency braking on. An evasive steering assist uh, is if you've had an accident, it will actually steer you away from the centre of the road uh, and stop you going into more traffic, which is obviously a very good idea. Uh, and then you've just got the sensitivity, which you can keep on normal, or you can change to high or low, depending on your preference. So let's come out of that one. Uh, rear view camera delay. Um, once you, if you, if you've got that switched on, and you reversed, um, no, you reversed out of a parking space, for example. As you drive away, there'll be a delay before the camera switches off, um, so you'll still see the camera in the Sync 4 system. Blind spot monitor, that just switches it on and off, pretty self-explanatory. Your parking sensors, front and rear, always switched on. Uh, your rear cross-traffic alert, and then you've got your reverse brake assist. Now those two last functions work together. Rear cross-traffic alert works when you're reversing out of a parking space. If there's traffic coming behind you from either direction, you'll get a warning on the dashboard, and then the reverse brake assist will actually apply the brakes if you haven't noticed or paid attention to the alerts from the rear cross traffic alert system. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. So that's the driver assistance setup. So as I said, there's quite a little bit to go through there, and you've basically got to sit and adjust your preferences to whatever you want things to be or work like, um, or how sensitive you want certain things to be. So you'd need to probably sit down uh, spend a little bit of time of using that and getting to know how it works uh, and adjusting your preferences. Uh, the next one we've got is vehicle. The top one is a vehicle power down timer. Um, so it's basically, it will let the vehicle run on just idle for a certain amount of time uh, and then it will switch off automatically uh, unless you choose to switch that off. 
the rear occupant, occupant alert, this is one that when you get out of the car, it will actually come up with this graphic on the screen and beep at you to say, don't forget your kids. Um, if it's just you in the car or one or two people in the car all the time, that's really annoying. So I always switch it off myself uh, because it's generally just me in the car. Uh, key detection alert is just when you get out of the car, if you've taken the key out with you, uh, it will beep at you. My key is the system where you can actually program one of your keys. Uh, if you're going to give your vehicle to a P-plater and you don't want them to use their phone, go too fast, have your music too loud, um, you can actually create what they call a My Key. Um, and you can adjust the settings on that key, give it to the P-plater, uh, and then it restricts how they can use the vehicle, um, which for any sort of mum and dad out there is fantastic. Uh, onboard modem serial number, so if you ever had any problems and needed to speak to Ford or your service department, your Ford dealership, uh, and then needed this serial number from your modem, you can basically just access it in there. Uh, now remote startup, this is Ford Pass. So if you've had Ford Pass on a previous Ford vehicle, you'll know what that is all about. So this is where you can um, pair your phone to your car and then do things like remote start your car, lock and unlock your doors, uh, you've got location services. Um, I will do a separate video for that um, to update for the new models of Ford Ranger and Everest. Um, I did do a video on that before, but it's some more functionality now. Um, so I'll make a new video of that in the meantime. Um, so what we can basically do with that, we can obviously turn the remote start on and off. On vehicles with dual zone climate control, you can put it on automatic. So on a hot day, it will automatically bring on the air conditioning and on a cold day, it will automatically bring on the heating for you. Um, to me, that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I would 100% have that switched on all the time. And then you can actually choose how long you want the engine to run for before it automatically switches itself off. So five, 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, then we come down to windows. So we've got global open and global close on the new ranges. So basically from your, um, your car key, you can basically open and close your windows with a press of a button. With your windscreen wipers, there's two options there. We've got rain sensing wipers, which we all know and love. And then you've got a thing called courtesy wipe. Now if you turn the courtesy wipe on, when you wash the windscreen, um, you know, you pull your lever back, washes your, washes your windscreen and wipes it. The courtesy wipe will actually do an additional wipe about five seconds um, after it's finished wiping the water off initially. Um, just to get rid of any excess water, which doesn't sound important, but actually once you use it, it's really handy to have. As my GoPro just switching itself off. Uh, we come to lighting. So all new Ford Rangers have got automatic high beam. Um, so that's where the high beam, um, if you've got a car coming towards you, the high beam will dip automatically uh, to avoid blinding people coming the opposite way, uh, and then goes back up to high beam once they've gone past. Uh, with head damp delay, um, so that's when you get out of the car. You can decide how long the lights stay on for uh, once you get out of the car. So if you've got a long driveway, you might want to see it with driveway to the front door. Uh, so that's quite a handy function. Uh, so we get rid of that. So with locks, you can decide. Uh, auto unlock means that when you turn ignition off, the car will automatically unlock. Miss lock chirp. So if you get out the car, I keep saying car, it's a Ranger, it's a dual cab, I know. If you get out your vehicle, the miss lock chirp will actually sound the horn if you go to lock the door and one of the doors isn't quite locked properly or quite shut properly. Um, so that's quite handy to have too. Um, and the audible feedback is if you press your button to lock your car and press it twice, you can actually use it to find your car in a car park. Um, so yeah, double pressing your lock button will sound the horn and um, yeah, it tells you where your car is. Uh, we've chosen to unlock all doors when we press the button and we're using the key free function as well. Uh, so basically the keyless entry. And then when we come down to mirrors, uh, so all we've got electric folding mirrors on the new Rangers, uh, we can choose the auto fold function. So as soon as we press the lock button, it will actually fold the door mirrors for us as well, which is really handy because when you walk away, all you've got to do is look back, look at the door mirrors and you know that your car is locked. So that's all the, the vehicle functions. Again, a little bit of a long-winded one, but there's plenty to, uh, to learn and go through there. If we look at general 
uh, functions and settings for this SYNC4 system. Um, there's not really too much to sort of do here, but you can choose which language you want. You can you choose what uh, measurement you have for your temperature, for your fuel consumption and your tire pressures. You can turn off the touchscreen beep if you like. So if you don't like it, we can literally hit that button and then anything after that, we've got no beeps. That's actually quite cool to be fair. Um, other bits and pieces are stuff you really wouldn't use. Um, the reset button down the bottom might be quite handy. Um, so if you were to go and sell your vehicle, you could go to the reset button, do a full master reset, and that would delete any attached Bluetooth mobile devices, anything connected to CarPlay, your forward pass system. Um, so that's actually really handy for when you're going to go and sell your vehicle. Um, can also be quite useful um, if you're having problems with your system um, and the dealership might say, if you look, reset the system, and then it helps to get stuff to work. It's a bit like when you turn your phone on and off if um, you know, some of the functions aren't working properly. Um, you know, you turn it off, you turn it back on, all of a sudden everything's working properly again. Uh, so that's your general bits and pieces. Uh, with the display, just gives you a couple of options. You can have a calm screen, so it'll get rid of all your text. Uh, just have a black screen with the time and the date. You can adjust the brightness of the screen. And you can also have uh, the mode, so it switches between light and dark uh, automatically, or you can choose to have one all the time. Uh, then we come to clock, pretty straightforward. You can have AM or PM, we're on a 12-hour uh, clock at the minute. Uh, we can switch to a 24-hour clock, and we can have an auto time update zone. And uh, So if you're traveling between different states, it will automatically change the time zone for you. Uh, which is quite cool. Connectivity, so this is where you connected vehicle features, so again, forward pass. So when your phone is actually connected to your car or your Ranger or your Ute or whatever, uh, for your forward pass, this is where you can turn on and off certain features of your forward pass. Uh, you've got Bluetooth there, so you can switch your Bluetooth on and off, but you can also change the name of your vehicle. So if you don't want it to say just a Ford Ranger, you can actually click on that and actually change the name. Um, so if you've got more than one Ranger or more than one Everest in your family, um, you can go and change it and call it whatever you want. Uh, wireless app projection. Um, I don't know whether this will become a thing because I don't know if you're like me. I'd, put, I'd end up using just my, uh, my wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, Wi-Fi networks. Um, this little symbol up here. This is your Wi-Fi network, uh, so when your SYNC4 system is connected to Wi-Fi. Uh, and you can use that for things like uh, doing software updates. So you just go in here and you would look for your uh, Wi-Fi network as soon as you're near home or near work. Um, I was actually trying to connect to my um, GoPro, which is rather strange. Um, but yeah, find your Wi-Fi network, put your password in, uh, and then you will connect to your Wi-Fi to make things a lot quicker and simpler to do your software updates. If we come out of there, so then, there you go, system updates there. So you can connect to Wi-Fi. The vehicle does have its own built-in modem, uh, but you can obviously uh, do your software updates via Wi-Fi. They would do them automatically, or you can schedule when you want your software updates to occur. So certain days of the week, certain times, uh, you can choose your preference on how that works. So then we come down to mobile apps. Again, this is where certain apps will appear on the Ford Sync screen without using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Um, not really sure how useful this is, if I'm honest, because, yeah, I would just use my Apple CarPlay, and I'm sure anybody who's got an Android phone would just use their Android Auto. Um, so that one's there. Uh, emergency assistance. Uh, this is a really, really good function. Um, you do need to have your phone connected for it to work. But once you've turned it on, if you have an accident and an airbag is triggered or the fuel pump switches off, it will actually make a phone call to emergency services for you. And then once that phone call takes place, uh, and the person on the other end of the phone will obviously make sure you're okay. Um, if you need police, fire, or ambulance to attend, obviously they will uh, arrange that for you as well. Um, they'll then use the GPS coordinates from your single four system to actually locate where you are. So that's actually really, really clever. Hopefully you'll never have to use that because it means your car's in a pretty bad way and, and possibly you may be too. 
so Ford Assistant is the voice control system for the standard SYNC 4 system, uh, so not Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Um, so if you wanted to change things like the temperature for the sat-nav or by voice put a sat-nav address in, um, so you can actually turn on the listen for wake word and then this is what you say to the system. Uh, I'm not going to say anything because it might suddenly trigger uh, while I'm trying to film this video. Um, so yeah, instead of st you basically say that that's on the screen, um, then it will ask you what you want to do. So then you could say, you know, put an address into your sat nav, change the temperature for your climate control if you've got it on your vehicle. Um, but it also tells you different functions that you can access. So all these functions here are what you can operate via your voice control and your SYNC 4 system. A little bit of fun there to be had. Uh, advanced mode, uh, if you click on there, what it will actually do, do is reduce the number of voice prompts required um, to actually use the function that you want to use. Um, so it just basically speeds things up a little bit. Uh, and the call confirmation will actually repeat back to you the name of the person that you're calling before it actually makes that phone call. Um, so it's actually quite a clever system, um, something you might find yourself using uh, from time to time. It's quite handy to have. And we have the towing one down there. Ah, this is what we were looking at earlier, we come back to the towing. Um, so yeah, that's all the settings for the SYNC 4 system. So as you can see, there's actually quite a lot going on with the SYNC 4 system. Um, it does take your time to get your head around it a little bit and work out where everything is. Uh, which is why I've made this video in the first place. Um, it might seem a little bit complicated, um, but you can obviously you know, skip to different parts of the video if you want to find something particular, or just rewind it if you need to repeat it again. Um, or what you can do is just ask me a question in the comments below, and I'll come back to you and find out what the answer is to the solution that you need. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. Uh, there's a lot of content coming for the new Ranger and Everest this year, uh, so stay tuned uh, because there's lots and lots of stuff coming soon. Uh, as I said, uh, leave me any comments or questions below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Uh, thanks for watching the video today, I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, and I hope to see you all in the next one.